Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about problem set one deep thought of CS50 introduction to programming with Python. So if you want to ask anything about programming or more about the career, schedule a free meeting with us, the link is in the description. And we would like to emphasize that this video solution is made for those who have already finished the assignment So and want to have another view about the problem, all right? We do not support plagiarism, okay? So let's just start. Basically, in the deep thought, we're going to implement a program that prompts the user for the answer to the great question of life, the universe and everything. So we're going to prompt this like we can see here in the example, all right? And we're going to output yes for this question if the user inputs 42, the number 42, or case insensitive, uh, 42 with a dash or 42 with a space. So we're going to check if the user type in the number or all it written with letters this number 42 okay and we can see this example in here all right so we're asking the question and we're and whatever the user type in we're gonna print yes or no okay so before we begin let's understand how we're going to use the input function basically the function input allows us to ask questions to the user and the answer that the user typed in we can store in a variable for example if we want to ask the name of the user we can do username equals to input what's your name and it will be prompt in the terminal the user can write his name if the user types in Giovanna the variable username will start Giovanna since the answer is stored in a variable we can use this answer in our code so now that we understood how input function works let's start implementing all right so we can see here in the example that we need to ask this question what is the answer to the great question of life the universe and everything so we, this will be what, what we're going to input inside our input function all right so let's do the following we're going to do here i already put a pseudocode in our file okay so here these are the steps we're going to use we're going to get the user input then we're going to print yes if the user inputs 42 or the word 42 otherwise we're gonna input no okay so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable called answer and we're gonna use the input function okay and what we're gonna write inside we're gonna say what is the answer to the great question of life the universe and everything okay so this is what we're going to start and if we do hit this in here so if we do python deep.py we're gonna see here the prompt what is the answer to the great question of life all right and i forgot to put here a question mark and a space so if we run this again let's run this again it's going to run the way that we are expecting to receive all right so now how can we check if the answer is correct or not so let's see how if and else condition works python if and else statements help coders control the flow of their programs an if and else Python statement evaluates whether an expression is true or false. If a condition is true, the if statement executes. Otherwise, the else statement executes. Let's suppose we want to check if a number is greater than 10. The number we want to check is stored in the variable x. We can check if this number is greater than 10 by doing if x operator greater and the number 10. If this condition is true, we're going to print numbers greater than 10 only. Otherwise, if the condition is false, we're going to have our else statement. In the else, we're going to print any condition satisfied. Let's see one example in the code above. Let's suppose that x stores the value 7. The if condition won't be true because 7 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the else printing any condition satisfied. Let's do another example, making the variable x holding the value 15. In this case, the if condition will be true because 15 is greater than 10, and we will print numbers greater than 10 only. After that, we won't see the else condition because we already found our right condition. A Python elif statement checks for another condition if all preceding conditions are not met. They appear after a Python if statement and before an else statement. You can use as many elif statements as you want. 
now that we've learned elif, let's improve the previous code with an elif statement. Let's add one more condition where we want to check if the number is less than zero. In this case, we would write elif x, the operator less, and the number zero. If this condition is true, we will print negative numbers only. Let's see one example in the code above. Let's suppose that x stores the value minus 5. The if condition won't be true because minus 5 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the elif block. Now we're going to check if this elif condition is true. Since minus 5 is less than 0, we will print negative numbers only. After that, we won't see the else condition because we already found our right condition. Let's do another example, making the variable x hold the value 5. In this case, the if condition won't be true because 5 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the elif condition. Again, this elif condition won't be true because 5 is not less than 0. Then we will skip the elif block and go Go to the else condition. In this else, we're going to print any condition satisfied. So now that we understood how if and else condition works, let's start implementing in our code, all right? So the first if condition we're gonna work is with the number 42, okay? So let's check if the answer is equal to the number. So if answer, all right? And since we are comparing things, we have to use double equals, all right? So let's see in here. So here we have to use if answer, double equals 42, we're going to print yes, right? This is what we have to do. So let's do, let's check if this first condition is working, then we can do the other ones. So if we do here pythondeep.py, it's he's asking, what is the answer to the great question of life? I'm gonna put here 42 and he's not printing anything. And why is that? Because if you remember, the input is going to return as a string, not a number. All right, so whatever the answer is storing, it's going to be a string. So we need to convert this into a string as well. All right, so let's see here why we're going to change in the number and not the answer, not doing the casting. Because if we see here in the hints, he's saying no need to convert the user's input to an int. If you want to check for equality with 42, quotation mark, a string rather than 42, an integer. So we're going to use quotation mark in here. All right, so 42. And if we try it out, now it's going to work. So python deep.py, if I put 42, he's printing yes. So this first one is correct. All right, now let's do the second one. So if we do here elif, all right, because we're giving one more condition, we're gonna say elif answer is equals to this word here. So I'm gonna copy and paste so we don't have any mistypo, all right? And if we have this, we're gonna print Yes, all right, let's see if this is working. So if we do python deep.py and if we put 42, it's printing yes, very well, so it's working, okay? And let's do the same for the 42 with a space in the middle. So we're gonna say elif answer equals equals 42 and we're gonna print yes. All right, let's see. So if we run again, 42 with a space, it's printing yes, okay? So far, so good, everything is working fine. But we have to be aware in this part, case insensitive, all right? So we have to make in a way that even if we type in all capital, for example, 42, it has to accept, but it is not accepting. So how can we make this case insensitively? Let's see the lower function. Basically, if we have a variable x equals to hello, all capital, and we want to print this variable all in lowercase, we can do x dot lower parentheses, and the result will be hello, all lower, all right? So now that we saw how lower works, let's implement this in our code. So if I put here answer, dot lower and all this only works for for letters that's why we're not putting in the line five okay so if we do answer dot lower here and answer dot lower this is the how we implement let's check what happens if he's going to accept again so if i do here for teach you now he's printing yes, so it doesn't depend anymore if it's we're reading all lower we are converting everything to all lower and comparing all right if we do like for t2 
with mixed cases here. It's going to print yes because the lower function is making our answer all lower and now we can compare with the all lower that we have in the right side. All right, so we're almost correct again, but we have to be, we have to think about something. What if the user put a space before typing in the word? What, what's going to happen? Let's see. If we run the code in here and if I put one, two, three, four, five spaces and I put the number 42, it's not printing anything. So this means that it is supposed to print yes, all right, because we have here the number 42. But since we have these spaces before, he's not recognizing the number. So how can we remove these spaces and then we can check the answer? Let's see this tree function. So I open up here the W3Schools. This is a really good resource if you have any questions about Python or HTML, CSS, JavaScript, whatever. This website is really good because you can understand a lot of functions and methods. Method. So let's see this method strip here. So the strip method removes any leading spaces at the beginning and trailing spaces at the end characters. Space is the default leading character to remove. So this function here it's going to remove anything we want. All right. Here we can leave this empty and this will remove the empty spaces. All right. So let's see basically how it works. Let's see this example. If we have a variable called txt that holds the value space space apple space space and we want to print this sentence my favorite fruit is and then the txt variable. If we do this way we're going to print the variable txt with all the spaces that it has so it would be my favorite fruit is a lot of spaces apple a lot of spaces after. To remove these extra spaces from our variable txt we can use the method strip. If we create a variable called x that holds the value txt.strip parentheses, this is how we implement the method strip. We're going to remove the spaces. So when we print the phrase again, it will appear just my favorite fruit is apple. So now that we understood how to use this strip function, let's implement here in our code, okay? So we're gonna add here in all our variable answers. So we're gonna do dot strip and after the dot lower, we can do dot strip as well, all right? Dot strip and dot strip, okay? Or if you want, you can create another variable, an auxiliary variable and do the changes, all right? But here it's working, let's see. So if I run this again, python dip.py and I put a lot of spaces, 42, it is printing yes. So it doesn't matter how many spaces we have after or before. Okay, and now let's do the last one here that is the otherwise output no. So this is the final thing we have to do. We can just do else because else is the same thing as otherwise and we're gonna print no. Okay, now let's see here if we try. So if I put here five, it's going to print no. And if I put here 42, it's going to print yes, okay? So now let's do the check 50 and see if everything is working fine. So like we can see here, we got all green. So this means that our code is correct, all right? So this is it for deep thoughts. If you like this content, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, send us a message on the comment or if you want to schedule a free meeting with us, all right? And hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.